Hello, and welcome back to another podcast episode with Brittany Bundles. You are listening to the Brittany Bundles podcast, where we empower people through entrepreneurship. And today what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to talk about and highlight three important qualities for entrepreneurs to have. Um, Entrepreneurship, I love everything about it, even the downs. (laughs) I love everything about the journey of entrepreneurship because it's so unique, yet there are so many experiences that are relatable to other entrepreneurs out there. Um, Going into my entrepreneurial journey, knowing that every path is, is going to be different and every walk is different for every entrepreneur, I expected to see more differences than I could similarities between the walks that I would uh, talk about amongst other entrepreneurs. And quite to my surprise, I realized that we aren't that different. (laughs) We're different, but we're not. Um, There are a lot of struggles that we all share, some spoken and some unspoken. There are a lot of obstacles that we overcome. There's a lot of creativity that we all experience Uh, when going into entrepreneurship, at least at some level. And so I've I've learned uh, interviewing people for my salon, uh, being able to mentor people, doing business consultations, public speaking, uh, working on on social media through YouTube and, and Instagram and Facebook. I've met so many people and I'm so blessed to have the experiences that I have. And I really want to talk about some of the qualities that every entrepreneur that I've met um, is either striving to have or or has. And uh, these qualities are really important for any success because they really encompass what entrepreneurship is about. So if you are interested in hearing about these three important qualities for entrepreneurs to have, be sure to stay tuned. Also, please share the podcast episode. Sharing the podcast helps to get the word out there. Also, it helps to um, uh, shed light on the entrepreneurs and businesses that have been featured on this platform. So we want to do our part with spreading the word, sharing information, connecting people, and ultimately empowering people through entrepreneurship. So please go ahead and share this podcast. You can share it by turning on the podcast episode while you're riding in the car with a family member or a friend. You can share it via social media, the links. You can share it via text message, email, uh, word of mouth. Just go ahead and be creative and share this podcast. I'll give you all a moment to do that and I'll be back in just a minute. All right. All right, so I am back and we're talking about three important qualities for entrepreneurs to have. Now, the first quality that I wanna go over is being optimistic and faithful. What I found along my entrepreneurial journey is in order for me to be as successful as I can be, along with a lot of people that I work with, I have to remain faithful, okay? And there's a two-part piece to faithful. Um, So the first part being, I need to remain faithful to my business, meaning that I'm giving my business the attention, I'm giving my business the time, I'm giving my business the energy, I'm giving my business the creativity, I'm giving my business what I need and I'm being faithful to it. So I'm not down talking my business when I'm around other people. I'm not um, talking about how much I can't stand doing this. I'm not um, neglecting my business and going missing. Like I'm being faithful to the process of entrepreneurship. I'm being face- faithful to my baby, to my business. Um, not to say that if you decide during your journey that you want to pivot your business, you want to create something new, you can always do that. But when you are deciding to go full-fledged with a business, being faithful, committed to it is a huge piece of that. Also, having faith. So being faithful, being optimistic, knowing that I don't necessarily see the success right now, but I know it's coming. I don't necessarily see um, me grossing 500000 this year, but I know it's coming. I don't necessarily see me public speaking to 15 schools this year, but I know it's coming. And so having faith and being optimistic, what that does is it, it keeps us motivated. It keeps us excited. It keeps us working towards building 
further success for our business. I never want to get to the point in my business where I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I never want to get to the point in my entrepreneurial journey where I'm like, you know what, I'm done learning. I can't learn anymore and I don't want to help anymore. I never want to get to that place. So having faith that my business is going to go to heights that I, that I can't even see, having faith that God placed inside of me a vision that can become reality, having faith that what I don't see does not mean that it's not going to be. Having faith and being optimistic that my business is going to become everything that I imagined it to become plus more. That is something, that's a trait that entrepreneurs that are successful have. They're optimistic, they're faithful, they have faith in what's to come and they work toward those goals diligently. Instead of me saying, you know what, I can't see my business becoming successful, so I'm done. The moment that you can't see your success is the moment that you want to stop right there and reevaluate and ask God to help you with that. Because if you don't see any potential in your business, if you aren't optimistic, if you don't have faith, then it's going to be really, really challenging, if at all possible, to convince other people to continue to have the faith in your business. You may be able to sell other people for a moment to continue to support and continue to think that your business is going to go someplace. But if over time you have not grown any um, faith, if you haven't grown any optimism regarding your business, you can bet that there are gonna be a lot of people that lose faith in you as well. A lot of people that lose faith in your business a lot of people that lose faith in what you say, what you stand for. And no, we're not waking up every day for other people only. But that's an aspect of being an entrepreneur, being sure that we're modeling uh, a great example, being sure that we're being transparent, being sure that we're helping as many people as we possibly can. So number one, optimistic and faithful. The next quality that I wanna go over is patience. Oh my gosh. Patience, <laughs> patience, patience, patience. I can't say that word enough. You know, there are so many people that still have the idea that success is going to come overnight, six months from now or in a year. And although we wanna celebrate our little successes, and I call them the smaller or little successes because they're successes that are bringing us closer to our overall goal, right? But there are a lot of people that don't acknowledge the successes that are bringing them to the huge success. And they get discouraged because they're not getting that big win right now. And they feel like they've been on the path for a very long time and that they deserve to have that win right now. And all I can say is everyone is different. Everyone has a different mindset. And God knows us all individually. And sometimes it takes different paths for different people to go down to learn the specific lesson that you need to be able to do the specific task that you are supposed to do, that you're assigned to. Sometimes it takes more time for you to refine the skill set that God placed in you, your gifts and talents, than it does for somebody else based on what they're designed to do, based on what they're assigned to do. Sometimes it takes you uh, more challenges to overcome, maybe to learn humility, resilience, to push you to think further, to push you to think outside of the box. There's a reason behind why things are like why they are. And the sooner we learn to trust God, the sooner we learn that we realize how much and how little we have in our control. You have control of what you do. God gives us free will. However, God also wants us to trust him and he wants us to have faith in what we ask for. And so there are many a times that I've asked God to bless my business and I woke up thinking, okay, this cell isn't doing as good as I wanted it to do. Is he blessing my business? Is this going to work? And I saw myself doubting right in front of my, 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 my eyes almost, you know, my thinking patterns becoming more so filled with doubt and me wanting to rush the process. I enjoy, I enjoy journey but I also enjoy reaching my goals, right? Like a lot of people. And so when some of my goals weren't reached at the time frame that I thought they should have been reached, I started to become impatient. And when you become impatient, there's a different mind shift that happens. 
You're not thinking in your best potential when you're when you're impatient. You're not weighing all of your options as you should when you're impatient. You're not as creative as you can be when you're impatient. Patience teaches so much. Patience has taught me to pace myself. Patience has taught me to not become discouraged and to hold on, to wait. Patience has helped me in my customer service skills or with my customer service skills and the customer service uh, aspect of my business. Instead of me getting frustrated quickly when someone doesn't and ask me the question straight out. Maybe they're going a roundabout way or whatever the case may be. Whatever irritates you in customer service, dealing with people, I've learned more patience and that has helped me tremendously to the point that I can see other people and how quickly they get frustrated and I see some of the opportunities that they miss out on because of their frustration, because of their anger, because of their irritability. Patience has helped me also be able to um, better proof my business and, and keep it safe from, from fraud. Instead of me saying, you know what? I want money deposited as soon as I, it's as soon as it hits, as soon as someone makes a purchase. So even though I may not be comfortable with this merchant, I'm going to use them because I just want the money now. Not realizing that this uh, specific merchant doesn't have a process that fights for the merchants. So if anyone ever was to dispute, I would have a hard time getting my funds back. So patience has also given me the mindset of checking into what I'm doing for my business before actually jumping into it and doing it, okay? Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about is being connected. Being connected to multiple people, um, and being a problem solver, so being solutions-based. I know that being connected and being relational is probably a better word for connected. Having a relationship mindset behind your business and brand is something that a lot of successful entrepreneurs have. They realize that their business doesn't just stand based on them alone. They realize that it's super important to connect with people in order to not only have their business thrive, but also help the growth in them. There are a lot of businesses that stop growing because there's no one working the organization that continued to grow. There's no one working the website that continued to grow. And a lot of times when we get to a certain point in our business, we feel like we have it. Okay, I've already done this training. I've done some of that training. I've, I've done this. I've possibly, you know, I've upset in this class. I've talked about this. So what else is there for me to, to, to learn? And we have that mindset, we hurt our business. We stop its growth. And so the more that we become connected, the more that we become uh, grounded and, and relationship oriented, the more we connect with more people and learn that there's always something to learn. That task doesn't stop. There's always someone to connect with. There's always someone to help. There's always someone that you can be of, of service to. And then being a problem solver, solutions-based, knowing that, you know, it's not if a problem arises, but when a problem arises, how will you handle it? If you stay in business long enough, there's going to be something that happens that doesn't go as you intended. There just is. Life doesn't always go as we intend but how we carry ourselves. And that's why patience is so important and faith is so important because we have to be able to look past the current conflict to be able to see what the overall goal is. And based on the overall goal is how I'm going to react. I'm not gonna react in this way out of uh, not having enough patience or irritability or anger because it satisfies the moment. I'm going to have patience and realize that, hey, I'm looking further than this issue. So let me find a solution, not just a Band-Aid. Let me make sure that you know that you're being heard with me. Let me make sure that you realize that we're building a relationship here. I'm, I'm on your side. I wanna help solve what it is you're, you're, you're going through. So if you come to me and you're like, hey, I didn't have a good experience working with another company. I wanna help with that. What can I do to make your experience better? What were you looking for in that experience? 
or if someone even comes, hey, I didn't like one of your products. Being able to have some of those tough conversations and figure out, well, what, what is it? What was wrong with that product? How can I make it better? How can I fix it? I talked a little bit ago on a few um, podcast episodes ago about an experience that I had this year with one of my dear uh, customers. Uh, she's purchased from me multiple times back from, you know, since I had the salon years ago and she never complained and she's been a faithful customer and she made a purchase and she reached out and said, hey, the lengths aren't what I ordered. And although uh, looking at the pictures, it looked like the lengths were what she ordered, I still listened to what she stated. I still didn't dismiss what she stated. I still showed empathy and I offered solutions so that she would feel comfortable working with me to keep that relationship. At this point, it's more than the product itself. I wanna make sure that I keep the integrity of our relationship. And so I'm gonna do whatever I can to solve that problem. I'm thinking solutions-based. I'm not just thinking about today and saying, oh, okay, well, you, you bought it, I got your money, that transaction is over, you know, better luck next time. Because some entrepreneurs have that mindset. But entrepreneurs that are successful, that have a solutions-based mindset, they go different places than the entrepreneurs that I just mentioned. And so I don't want to be an entrepreneur where I'm just thinking about today. I don't want to be an entrepreneur where I'm not considering a relationship. I don't want to be an entrepreneur where I'm impatient and I'm irritable. I don't want to be an entrepreneur where you reach out to me and you don't know what type of tone I'm going to be in today, what type of response you're going to get. I used to work with someone and he was a manager. And um, there was a time that I, I went in, I went in uh, to work and he, um, I think I, I asked him a question or something and he barked back at me. And then he later apologized and he said, you know what, I'm just not a morning person. And I felt some kind of way about that because I'm like, well, number one, why are you here working hours that you aren't really going to be working? Because he didn't want anyone asking him questions in the morning because he wasn't a morning person. And um, why did you tell me the other day to ask questions? Feel free to ask you questions. Um, but didn't tell me the stipulation on you need to wait until the afternoon because I'll bark at you in the morning. I'm not a morning. You know what I mean? And so I kept thinking about these things. And I realized seeing how he reacted or interacted with people that it wasn't just me. He was very irritable with everyone. And uh, it wasn't just in the morning. It could be in the afternoon, too. And, um, you know, at that point, I realized that that was uh, a cover up just to say, you know, in the morning, I'm not a morning person. And it was a way to um, kind of release some of the responsibility that he had to present himself in a professional way as soon as he arrived at work. And I never want to be like that with anyone. Do I fall short? Yes, we all do. And so even in that scenario, I was able to forgive him, even though I felt some kind of way I had to. Um, I guess I didn't have to, but I felt like I needed to. And we moved forward. But I, I took from that, I never want to be that short with people. Um, do I get irritated? Yes. Do I get frustrated? Yes. I'm not going to say I never do. But I know that God has worked within me a new sense of patience um, because I don't get irritated as, as easily as I used to. And that is something that has helped me in my personal life as well as with my business. Being optimistic, knowing that I don't know everything. I don't know exactly what's going to happen next month for my business, but I know God's going to take care of it. I know that I'm doing my part. I know that God's going to continue to bless me with ideas. I know that God is available if I need to consult or ask him anything. So I'm going to be optimistic because of that. And I'm going to be faithful to my business, whether my business does what I, I anticipate it to do or not, because this is something I'm passionate with. It's something I'm passionate about. It exceeds the monetary aspect. There are people that I know that have reached their monetary goals that still aren't satisfied. Have you ever met someone and they thought that getting this certain car or getting this certain house or even getting a certain amount of money would make them happy? And ironically, they got it. You know, you may have not thought they were going to get it and they probably thought they weren't going to get it, but then they got it. And then if you notice, they're still the same way. Like after that huge rush, their personality traits are still there. So if they were a person that, that didn't have patience, 
a lot of times you're still that person without patience. If there's someone that's not really satisfied after some time, they're not satisfied with what they got. And so I've learned that being a true entrepreneur in the best form and being able to fully appreciate your ride and your journey, learning to enjoy not just the money aspect, but the relationships that you meet, the lessons that you learn, the growth that is necessary and that happens to many of us entrepreneurs, learning how to be dedicated and faithful, the solutions-based mentality, all of that, these are life lessons that can contribute to every area of your life. These are life lessons and these are qualities that will contribute to your legacy. And so just like we talk about financial stability for our loved ones, we want to make sure that we're setting a good legacy for our loved ones as well. And for those that don't even know us. So keep that in mind. Those are the important qualities that I wanted to highlight today in today's podcast. I really hope that you all enjoyed it. If you want to be a guest on the Brittany Bundles podcast and share your entrepreneurial experience, I'd love to have you. If you'd like to uh, have me promote your business or a product, I'd love to do it. Be sure to reach out to me. You can reach out to me uh, via email at b, the letter b, talks, T-A-L-K-S at yahoo.com. You can always go to my website as well, keepingupwithbrittany.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage and submit your question via the form. That website is keeping, K-E-E-P-I-N-G, up, U-P, with, W-I-T-H, Brittany, B-R-I-T-T-N-E-Y.com. Also, please follow me on social media. I am on Instagram at Brittany underscore bundles. I'm on Facebook at Brittany Bundles, YouTube at Brittany Bundles, and Twitter at Brittany Bundles. Until next time. I'll talk to you all in the next podcast episode.